have with me today again, Rob Christian. So some of you may remember that we made a previous video and uh, to follow on from that, uh, we are going to discuss today some of the Christian persecution that goes on in the world, unfortunately, uh, right to this day, literally. Also some scripture, i.e. Bible verses, and some uh, Quran and Hadith verses that Rob will be able to obviously uh, speak in Arabic to. Um, so if anyone is not aware, I don't believe it for a second, but Rob Christian is a YouTuber. His channel is Rob Christian. It's very easy to remember and to find. He does some amazing work for the Lord. He polemicizes Islam and he is a Christian apologist. He has had uh, recently, very recently, Muslims uh, feel comfortable enough with him to uh, admit that they have left Islam and to come to Christ. Um, so praise God for that. And I'm going to hand you over to Rob, hopefully, if he doesn't mind, to open with a, a quick prayer. So, yeah, Rob, over to you. Yeah, hey, thank you, sister, for inviting me for an amazing, uh, another amazing, Lord willing, another amazing uh, video with you. Uh, last time we had an uh, amazing topic and it turned out to be uh, uh, hopefully a benefit for everybody, including the Christians and the Muslims. Uh, and maybe it will lead some Muslims uh, back to the truth, leave Islam and come back home to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, because that's what we are doing. Uh, we are not doing this for ourselves. We are only here to serve the truth, nothing but the truth. So thank you for allowing me to be here. Thank you for this opportunity again, yet again. And let us start with a nice prayer. I think it's a good habit to start with a nice prayer. So pray with me in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Dear Lord Jesus, bless our beloved audience and subscribers who are going to listen to this video. Lord, thank you for your grace. We believe, Lord Jesus, that you are truly arisen. You are risen indeed. Al Masih qam, haqqan qam. That's we, what we say in the Arabic. Jesus is truly risen. Thank you for your ultimate gift, Lord. Thank you for your grace that saved us from eternal death, eternal damnation. And thank you for our amazing audience and subscribers who are always supporting our dear sister here or my own full-time ministry, our YouTube channels. Please bless them and our loved ones and families and keep all of us healthy and safe, especially safe from the spread of the coronavirus. Father, enfold us in your arms. Help us need not to lean in our own understanding when everything acknowledge you, Lord, so that you can direct our words, thoughts and actions. Please, Jesus, give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into any discouragement, taqiyya, any lies, any makr of Allah who believe we believe that he is Satan. Lord Jesus, I pray to you and ask you to shine your holy light on all of us, including the Muslims who might listen to this video, who might be in need and are seeking for the truth. Please, Lord, open their eyes so they can also be saved like we are saved. Lord, fill us with the Holy Spirit and loosen our tongue today and guide us so we can speak the truth, nothing but the truth. And please give them, give us wisdom and courage to do whatever needs to be done. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen. Right, so with that, I'm going to start. I want to just uh, let anybody watching know that, um, unfortunately, at least in the West, uh, we are largely unaware of the wholesale persecution and um, attacks, murders, rapes, uh, denigration of holy sites, um, the forced, um, you know, uh, making people flee, basically. Um, and our government is not, at least in Britain. We have a report that was commissioned and has been acknowledged by the government and verified. And uh, it, it goes into such graphic detail that I don't really want to share too much today, although I will make it available. Um, but I wanted to just, the, I guess, the most hard hitting statistics. These are from the 2018 year. There are now newer statistics, but these are uh, more verified, I guess you would say, um, or fresher in the minds of the, um, yeah, the people that I've spoken to about it. So just uh, just to jump right in, I guess, um, 245 million 
So in the top 50 world watch list countries alone, there are another 144 countries where Christians are persecuted to a lesser degree. But in the top 50, there are 245 million Christians uh, experiencing high levels of persecution for just solely for their choice to follow Christ and confess him as Lord. There are also, as I discussed with Jay the other day, one in nine Christians now, that's an increase from one in 12 who experience high levels of persecution. That's, uh, there are 14%. So the rise in the number of Christians in the top 50 countries only um, on the 2019 list has gone up 14%. So nothing is getting better for those people. It's only getting worse. Four, I can't believe these are, these are true things. 4,136 Christians are killed for faith-related reasons in those countries in that year. 2,000, I'm so sorry, Rob, this is just awful. 2,625 Christians were detained without trial, arrested, sentenced and imprisoned just in those top 50 countries alone. And lastly, I will come back to this list and it is horrific. 1,000. 266 churches or Christian buildings were attacked in the top 50 uh, World Watch List countries. And we know that they are generally not attacked when they are empty of worshippers. They have been bombed, they have been uh, set on fire, that rapes have occurred in them, murders have occurred in them. Um, very briefly, a 22-year-old uh, Nigerian lady or girl who was a microbiology student, her name was Vera, she chose to use a church that was empty for her studies. And when she came around in the hospital, after she was found battered and bloody on the floor of the church, she reported that she had been raped, beaten, and uh, hit in the head with a fire extinguisher. And she passed away some uh, three to four days later after having been able to uh, give that account. And that's just one of the 4,136 uh, Christians. In, and actually, no. She's additional to that because she was just this month in in 2020 when we're all out um, being able to, you know, live in a free world, at least here. These things are going on under our noses and we're unable to even find out the most basic information without looking for it. So other atrocities that are rightly reported and there's indignation everywhere. Um, these, for some reason, do not get the publicity that they need in order for people to um, help. So Rob, with that, um, I was like, I'd like to also say actually that North Korea is the number one place. It's absolutely atrocious to be a Christian there. They are obviously not Islamic. Um, I don't, I don't um, assert that all Christian persecution is Islamic, far from it. There are Hindu nationalists. There are, you know, other people who persecute Christians. But it is a fact that Christianity is globally the number one persecuted religion. Um, and yet it feels to me in the West that we are um, given a different narrative that a certain other religion is persecuted and, uh, you know, discriminated against and feared. So I'd like to try to understand from a Quranic narrative, um, where does this intolerance stem from? Because even though I've read the Quran, I know that there are also verses that um, speak well of Christians and Jews particularly. So if you could try and help me, Rob, with a verse or a hadith or some something or help yes. the viewers actually. Well, uh, yeah, you know, we should uh, to understand the persecution uh, by Muslims against the Christians, uh, especially in the Middle East and yeah, when it later spread to many continents like Africa, uh, we, we need to go back to the foundations. We need to go back to the basics. And who is the basic? It's Muhammad himself. It's all about this one man who created this man-made call that we call Islam for his own uh, sexual desires and power lust. Muhammad created Islam for himself, by himself. And we know he got the help of uh, his wife Khadija, who was the most wealthiest woman in uh, in mecca so uh with her money with her wealth uh, muhammad could uh you know after he did hijrah after he went to medina because remember when he started his so-called prophethood with the help of waraka and his wife khadija he was very peaceful he tried to reconcile uh with the meccans 
So here we see that Muhammad is trying to be peaceful, but when he uh, had to uh, flee Mecca, and you know Muslims always say he was persecuted. I mean, if he was persecuted, he would have not stayed for at least a decade there, right? So he actually uh, left after many years uh, from Mecca to Medina. And at that time, it wasn't called Medina, it was called Yathrib, it was a Jewish town. So when Muhammad went there, uh, things started to change. First, he started to reconcile with the Jews, but the Jews rejected him. They knew that this guy is nothing but a scam, right? They knew everything uh, they were telling him from their Jewish legend stories and folk tales, fairy tales, he immediately took it and adopted it into Islam and called it Quran. And this is why we see over and over in the Quran uh, that Muhammad is being accused of a nothing but a storyteller. Uh, stories of the ancients, right? Asatir uh, al Those are legend stories before you. So they, the people knew that Muhammad was copying man-made stories bedtime stories, child stories, like the punishment of the grave, into Islam. So when he became stronger and he used the money that he had from Khadija, he started to buy himself an army of thugs. And he, first he started to attack the caravans of the Meccans. And when he got more richer and a bigger army for himself, he also started to attack the Jews. And it, it went so far that, uh, you know, there was a tribe which was called Banu Nadir, who actually also re uh, rejected him. He cut down their trees and he burned their trees. Until today we see Muslims saying, Muhammad never cut down trees, Muhammad never burned trees. But the Muslim sources uh, are actually uh, showing us the true face of Islam. You know, and Muslims need to use all kind of mental gymnastic lies and taqiyya and deception to hide those actual facts. Uh, and after Muhammad, you know, he didn't need to do any more taqiyya. I remember the stages of jihad, the three stages that we mentioned many times. Uh, stage number one, two, and three. And the final stage is that when Muhammad does not need to do any reconciliation, he has enough power, he is the number one guy. He starts then to expel the Jews and uh, not only the Jews, also the heretical Nasara, right? The Nasara who he confused with the actual Christians, which we, which is us, right? So uh, he wiped out the Nasara and he got rid of the Jews in the Hijaz, right? Which is nowadays Saudi Arabia, let's say. So this is why we don't see uh, any Christians in Mecca or Medina, any Jews in Mecca or Medina, because Muhammad wiped them out. So, and you know, then Muhammad starts to attack Khaybar uh, after expelling the uh, Banu Nadir. He goes to Khaybar and he conquers Khaybar. And you know the story about the poisoning, how the Jewish woman poisoned him. You know, we, we talked about that last time, I think. So this here you see a, a man who in the beginning of his so-called prophethood, he was peaceful, he would try to reconcile. But later, when he did not need to reconcile anymore and he was strong enough and he got himself a huge army, there is no reconciliation anymore. Uh, and we see the letter Ayas, like uh, chapter 9, uh, that he starts to uh, tell his Sahaba, his followers, you don't need uh, to trade anymore with, uh, with the pagans and the Christians and the Jews. They are najis, they are filthy, they are not allowed to enter Mecca. We see then the Muslims, they start to complain. But Muhammad, you know, we have always, tr always traded and, uh, you know, uh, traded goods with the, with, the, with the Christians, with the Romans, with the pagans. Uh, we will go bankrupt. Muhammad said, don't worry, be happy. We have a solution. What is that solution? It's jizya. Let us force jizya on the people of the book who are the Jews and the Christians. And uh, that's the solution. So they can be feel disgraced, belittled, right? And we see many false translations like Sahih International calling it uh, 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 humbled. <laughs> humbled. Yeah, humble. So, They're already humble, Christians. Yeah, imagine you, you are being forced to pay jizya or else, right, you don't pay jizya, uh, you have to leave the country. If you don't want to pay jizya and you don't want to leave your own ho houses, ho your homes, uh, they are allowed to kill you as a man and, and take your women, your money uh, and your daughters, uh, you know, uh, your wives as so sex slaves. For anybody who's watching who's unfamiliar with the term, uh, jizya is it's found in the Quran as a term. I had a Muslim the other day say, "Oh, but it's not Quranic. 
and then obviously I showed him <laughs> it's basically protection money. In yes. effect, it's called by Muslims, it's called a tax. They say, well, you pay your council tax, you pay your government taxes, don't you? But it's a separate, different tax than mm. the majority Muslims would pay in their own country. It's a dimitude. So the word dimi is like a subservient, second-class citizen, basically. They have yeah. some it's, as opposed it, to like maybe polytheists, but it's a facade. It, not it's, to, it's funny, sister, that a Muslim is going to say that it's not in the Quran. I mean, the word is right there in chapter 9, ayah 29. The word is there, yeah. al-jizya. So how, how dare you to lie straight to our faces? Or maybe, you know, let, let us give this Muslim uh, the benefit. Yeah, a benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's ignorant. Maybe he's an ignoramus who does not know his Arabic Quran, you know, because you will, you will see the words humbled. Well, if we go to more correct translation, we'll see that they are, have to be humiliated. So you, the Jews and the Christians must pay jizya and they must be, feel disgraced or humiliated. Humiliation. So, uh, you know, and still they dare to say it means humbled. I mean, as if we don't know the words, the Arabic words, Wahum Sagirun. The literal meaning is to I be, to to be, be honest, little. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I'd ask you if I didn't know you. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, this, this is basically, you know, just uh, an introduction how, you know, that we see the changes in this man, Muhammad, right? Because without Muhammad, you, there's nothing called Islam. So when he was in Mecca, we see the Meccan period ayahs. Basically, you can cut the Quran in half. You have the Meccan period when he was in Mecca. He was peaceful. He tried to reconcile with the pagans. But when he went to Medina, to Yathrib, which he yeah. called later Medina, he renamed it to Medina. We see that Muhammad is a totally changed man when he does not need to make friends. He does not need to reconcile with anyone anymore. He has an army he has and he can power. do, he's basically the king. He has the, all the power. There is no need for taqiyya. There is no need for deception anymore. Muhammad will start to fight anyone who does not accept him. Remember? You know, you know Rob, that just, just put into my mind. So Muhammad becomes in effect a king mm -hmm. and that's how he decides to uh, display the love and the mercy and the grace of God. Whereas Christ is the King of Kings, and yet he literally humbled himself, he emptied himself, he became lesser than the angels in order to sacrifice himself for us in his position as King of Kings, Lord of Lords. Um, like the, the contradiction for somebody else to then come along and say, I'm in this same tradition of uh, prophethood, I'm from the same God, and yet I'm going to go against all of the peaceful verses, not all of them, but I have some of them that I'm going to share like later. Mm -hmm. For me, it's so very obvious that even to the Jews, it was so very obvious this is not Yahweh to whom he refers, even when he, you know, venerated the Torah and said that he believed in Yahweh. Yeah. So sorry to interrupt you. Yeah. Yeah. yeah you know, and, and later, as I mentioned, sister, uh, when Muhammad uh, is very strong, he does not need to lie anymore or try to become friends with anyone. We can also see very uh, 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 devastating uh, hadith, right? When he ha we, when he has when he is in full control, he is the leader of the army. Uh, there is no need to lie anymore. Then he says, if we go to let's say uh, a, a very uh, uh, authentic hadith. Uh, from the mouth of Abu Huraira, who narrates that. Let me go and see what uh, uh, the source is. It's from Sunan An Nisa'i, hadith number 3974. Let me read that part, sister, if you don't mind. It says Abu, Abu Huraira narrated, the Messenger of Allah said, I've been commanded to fight the people until they say, La ilaha illallah, there is no God but Allah, and whoever says it, his life and his wealth and safe are safe from me. So in other words, you have to accept the Shahada, you have to become a Muslim or else, what or else, or, or he is allowed to kill you and take your money and your women, right? That's what the wealth means. El, and, and else, uh, it also, if you don't accept, if you don't accept him uh, and you don't become a Muslim, that means he is allowed to kill you and take your women as sex slave. I mean, uh, 
Does this sound it's like not a choice? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to no go chance. out on a limb yeah. and say it sounds like a threat. <laughs> yeah, my sister, it's last time, yeah, you, you know, we talked about Yasser Al Qadi and whatnot. You remember the interview yes. uh, with uh, Muhammad Hijab? Yasser yes. Qadi had the audacity to lie to everybody, to lie to his own audience when he said, you know, Islam uh, came with equality for the people. And not only that, he said Islam abolished racism. What, where, where's the quality uh, from the Prophet of Islam? I think maybe Yasser Qadi uh, and others like it's him. Or, in the Bible, uh, maybe. Yeah, they, they are forgetting chapter 9, uh, ayah 28, 29, and they are also forgetting uh, this, this hadith where Muhammad is saying, I have, I've been commanded to fight everybody who does not say the shahada, take his shahada. So else, uh, uh, they are allowed to kill you. Muhammad is allowed to kill you uh, and, and take your women and, and wealth. I mean, uh, I where's the equality? That the equality, I tell you where it is. The equality is only for um, men <laughs> who mm. are of fighting age, it seems, and mm. who were either the companions or Muhammad or within his circle. And then obviously the tradition was carried down because women, Aisha reports, um, Aisha is one of the wives of Muhammad, the youngest, I believe. I hope she was the youngest because she was very young. Yeah. She said that she had never seen. Uh, women suffering as much of, as those of the believing women. So there was also a like a perverse equality amongst those women. They all suffered. Yes. Yes. Uh, the men got to, uh, you know, have multiple wives against what Yahweh says. Yeah. They got to steal against what Yahweh says. They got to lie. Yeah. You'll never believe it. It's against what Yahweh says. So Yeah, yeah exactly. You said yeah. a very important thing, sister, here. I mean, why are the men allowed to... Uh, beat the women. Why are the women in Islam not allowed to beat their husbands? I mean, if a woman can be Maybe disobedient, are you saying that a man cannot be disobedient? I mean, where's the equality here, right? Even as you said it, there's no equality between the man and his wife in Islam. So why are women not allowed to beat their husbands? I mean, if you if you call, if you talk want to talk about equality, and why are the men not half brained? Why are only the women, according to Muhammad Naqisat al Aql, half brained? Right, so literally Canada. half brained. Yeah, yeah. It's it's strange that you know, and it really it, it really uh, it's 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 a shameful thing that there are still women in Islam who accept that it. this unequality. You know, how can you, how can you accept, how can you accept that a 1400 years ago, a man in, uh, by the shape, uh, the form of Muhammad who said that about you, do you have any self-respect uh, and, and, and still accept it in 2020 that there's a guy called Muhammad who called you half-brained? Where is your self-respect? Where is your dignity, Muslim women? I'm talking to the Muslim women. Think, think with me. Mm. They're mm. unable to think because obviously... Mm. <laughs> uh, they'll have <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, the thing, man, no. I mean, I guess to bring it back just slightly to Christian persecution, mm -hmm. again, I want to reiterate that I am not laying um, the sole blame for Christian persecution against Islam. For sure I'm not, because all of the martyrs, like there, there are, there's a martyr described in the Bible. So Christians have been persecuted. That's Stephen, if anyone, I'll put the reference. Yes. Um, from the beginning, basically, the Christians were persecuted by Jews, um, in some respect by Rome, but not necessarily if they paid their taxes. Um, basically, Christ himself said, they will hate you because they hated me first. And we see in another verse that he came as a light to the darkness and the darkness did not accept him, basically feared him, did not recognize who he was. Mm -hmm. So... Um, but yeah, the first instance, I guess, I mean, Christ wasn't a Christian as such. He is the, the model for Christians. He mm. himself was persecuted, hounded, slandered. Um, they picked up stones. They had no respect for him, um, even though we see quite clearly um, parallels between, for example, you know, I think it's Psalm 68, maybe 86, how embarrassing. And in Romans, we see that the same language is used solely for Yahweh. And then it is replicated in Romans solely for Yeshua or Jesus Christ. So we see why, because for some someone who's not a Jew or is not educated in the Old and New Testament, you may read through these um, passages and think, well, why do they keep picking up stones? Like, what's wrong with them? He's not really saying anything outrageous. But because they knew that what he was describing was 
the remit of God alone, they knew that by a roundabout way, he's saying he is God. And so the persecution starts from there, really. But Muhammad, I would say the verse that you reference, um, for it's prescribed for you to fight and oh, actually fight those who believe in who, who believe not in Allah, nor the last day, nor the day of judgment, but um, fight them until they find themselves humiliated and pay the jizya willingly. Then you've got another verse where Allah is saying, even if you don't know why you have to fight, I'm telling you that I know best and you will fight. It is prescribed for you to fight and you will fight until there are no more unbelievers. Yeah. But what I often think of at that point is, Allah also promised that he would make the Christians superior until the day of judgment. Therefore, we know that on the day of judgment, there are still Christians, um, you know, as this day unfolds. So yeah. one of those things has to be incorrect. You can't yeah. fight until there are no more, yeah. and yet there they are. So, uh, Are you yeah, basically saying, sister, are you basically saying we have a contradiction here? <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I mean, I wouldn't be the first. Yeah. <laughs> well, what I would say is it could be the corrupted part yeah. because, as we know, Muslims have been well, apologists have been screaming for years and years yeah. that the Quran is perfectly preserved to the last dot. Um, every ayah, every uh, I think the kira, even the down to the recitation. Whereas we know anyway, and those Muslims also know that Uthman. Uh, had a great problem with various different recitations with various different words and pronunciations also. We know that Hatun, our sister, has found in the thousands of um, iterations that do not match each other. So one of them, I've been told, is of theological significance. So it's not just with the Bible, and we're getting off the topic of persecution, but with the Bible, the vast majority, I would um, assert, of the textual variants are spelling mistakes they are maybe a word out of place or you know like if you're just a, a scribe and you're copying away some small error that doesn't greatly um, change anything it may just be literally a different pronunciation or spelling or or word whereas we know now that one of the differences and there are another seven i think that are just a different word so that changes the meaning also um but I don't hear any Muslims now claiming corruption of the Bible even. Perhaps they've um, all gone off to tea somewhere, but they claim they had a perfectly preserved Quran until the Islamic scholarship comes to some consensus as to whether that's still true or not, despite of the evidence in front of their eyes. I mean, Yasser Qadi has basically admitted that academia for some time, Islamic academia especially, has known all of this for some time, and he referenced regular Muslims. So he says to Muhammad Hijab, this is what the regular Muslim needs to know. And basically it's a, like a, something to just, uh, you know, put them to one side. This is what you need to know. You're clearly not as in, you know, academic as us. Don't worry your pretty little heads. We'll get, you know, we'll sort all this out. Which, whereas we know in Christ that we are positively encouraged to use our own brains, our own hearts. We, if Please God, it never happens. But if the Bible was no longer in existence, for one, we could recreate it. But for sure, having the living God, the Holy Spirit indwelling you, gives you a very different, I imagine, um, sense of moral justice and love and the fruits of the Spirit, which you can't have without the Spirit. And Muhammad, unfortunately, um, even though the Holy Spirit is in the Quran, Similarly to Isa, it's not our Holy Spirit, it's not our Jesus, it's not our God either. It's, um, I don't know who they are, but they are basically the workings of Muhammad. He had um, Waraka, who was a transcriber. He had access to Christian and Jewish and, like you say, the infancy gospels, heretical uh, texts of that century. And even by inserting one, so to be a completely divine revelation, as anybody watching, and I'm, obviously you know, Rob, it needs to come from a divine source. And it, it doesn't have to be unknown to people because obviously the prophets came with the same messages and the same uh, warnings from God. But it at least has to be not replicated in a book that was written 50 years previously. And if you can find it there and the words have been changed now, you're either calling God a liar or Jibril uh, a poor messenger or if you know if you can see the the well the plagiarism basically in Christ speaking from the cradle um or you know there are some other stories in there 
And I've had Muslims admit to me, yes, that is from there. And therefore it's not from God because uh, Jibril didn't show up with a book. He showed up with some words, as you know. Oh, and a, a very firm <laughs> grip around the throat. So I've gone way off Christian persecution, but I'm going to come back to it. I'd like to actually, uh, at the risk of just sounding off my own voice, I'd just like to read two Bible verses. So a very dear friend of mine um, helped me with the prep and sent me these off the top of his head. So I basically asked him for some verses that show the false position of um a book that purports to be holy scripture saying fight until there is no more unbelief God yes doesn't sister uh if i can add to what you said earlier uh you know uh muslims always say you know that they uh respect isa they call him isa jesus we don't believe it's the same person we know actually if we dig, do some digging we see that uh you know uh, his mother especially his mother uh if we do some digging in the quran it turns out that she's suddenly the sister of Aaron and moses but you know that's Basically off topic. You look well but what for I, her age. Yeah. In the sense. She yeah. looks very young. Yeah. But you know, thousands of years old, yeah. You know, if you if Muslims claim that Muhammad is in the line uh, of all the true prophets before him, then you you have to be consistent and here is why. Remember, when Jesus uh, came uh, in the flesh, uh, as the eternal word of God, he entered the flesh uh, and he took on flesh. Uh, Jesus said in the Bible, and if we go to chapter 5 of Matthew, Matthew 5, we can read uh, that Jesus is saying, you have heard that it was said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. And he continues saying, uh, you have heard that it was said, love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I tell you now, Jesus saying, but I tell you, love your enemies and praise for those who persecute you. Uh, you know, that you may be children uh, of your father in heaven. So if Muhammad claims to be in the line of all the prophets before him, especially when he says there is no prophet between me and uh, uh, Jesus, who they call Isa, then Muhammad needs to be at least consistent. He should not have changed it 180 degrees the other way and start the uh, an eye for an eye because that's what Islam actually teaches. If uh, if, if someone kills you, you, you know, you're allowed to, to take revenge. Uh, you know, uh, if, unless it's the Jew who was strangled yeah. in basically in front of Muhammad, and he yeah. said, "No, no, no. yeah." Uh, remember, if if you're a Jew and you kill a, a Muslim, uh, especially under Sharia law, when when Sharia law is implemented in that country, you as a Muslim are allowed, you know, uh, to to uh, take uh, basically uh, to to kill him or maybe uh, take some blood money from the family, right? At least blood money so here we have a totally different teaching 180 degrees the other way this is why christians understood that muhammad is nothing but a scam he is nothing but a liar he is nothing but a fake prophet if you claim to be a prophet of the same god the god of abraham isaac and jacob you have to at least be consistent and be in the line of the prophet before you and you here can, muhammad you know failed miserably do? yeah do you know what you have to do you have to make sure that none of the Christians at the time, when you're going around doing your campaign, know of Luke 16, 16, mm -hmm. which clearly says this. I'm going to read it word for word. It says um, the law and the prophets were proclaimed until John. So that's basically the law and the prophets is the Old Testament. And also John comes prophesying Christ since that time. So since the time of John, and everyone is forcing their way into it so up until john the law and the prophets yeah. after that there's no more law and prophets as it were i don't mean the law is like yeah. abolished i mean the law and the prophets till then and then the holy spirit is there indwelling those christians from that time the kingdom of god is being preached right now from then from that time onwards and uh, everybody is trying to get in get his way into it so we know that there are no more prophets after john um, we don't see Christ as merely a prophet. We see him as the living God. Um, in fact, in the Aramaic Plain English Bible, in Matthew 14, 27, the story of the calming of the storm, he literally says, do not be afraid, for I am the living God. Um, Amen. Which is yeah. something Muslims are always saying, where does he say I'm the God? Yeah, so, yeah. The, I am, yeah. And, yeah. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. uh, and, and it's strange, you know, uh, uh, while Jesus say, love your enemies, forgive, forgive those who persecute you, you're going to be blessed if they insult you in my name and persecute you in my name. Here we see Muhammad, like as we mentioned before in Surah at the chapter of the sword, 
uh, uh, you know, uh, Al Qital. There are many yes. nicknames for this uh, amazing, uh, lo peaceful, and loving uh, chapter of the Quran, chapter nine, Surah At Tawbah. Uh, and you know, it's an irony that it's called uh, the mercy. The chapter is called the mercy, but we see that Muslims have to no, fight yeah. against the people of the book. I mean, uh, Muhammad, be consistent, right? And we sometimes, I, I, I once asked uh, a Muslim about this very important question. You know, when we ask Muslims, did your prophet order the killing of any women and children, any innocent women and children? Muslims, without hesitation, they say, no, Muhammad never killed innocent women or children. But if we, we go to their sources, we find totally different. They are actually calling their prophet a liar and a deceiver. And here is why. If we go to the hadith, uh, Muhammad once was asked by one of the Sahaba, it's reported in Sahih Muslim and in other uh, uh, books too, uh, authentic books, it says, you know, that uh, it's reported on the authority of uh, a Sahabi, uh, Jatama, that the prophet of Allah, when asked he, and here comes, the, here comes the disaster. When Muhammad was asked about the women and children of the polytheists, of the pagans, being killed during the night raid, Muhammad said, look at the response of Muhammad, they are from them. In other words, continue the killing of women and children. And, and if we go to uh, uh, IslamQNA.info, uh, which is a official Islamic Sunni of Salafi website. We have also a Sheikh who is always issuing fatwas by the name of Sheikh Muhammad Salah al Munajjad. And I can also give you the fatwa number, which is 2437. Uh, when, when a Muslim is asking this question, we see that the Sheikh is saying, you know, uh, only a, a person uh, who is a criminal, he is uh, he's, he's, uh, crazy in the head, can do such thing. So uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, only only someone who is not a Muslim, who does not know Allah, only a criminal with a heart harder than a stone, who has no mercy, who does not know Allah, does not believe in the hereafter, would do such acts, which is killing uh, women and children. Killing of women and children. So according to the Shaykh, right, and we mentioned his name, Shaykh Muhammad Salah al Munajid, which is a Sunni Shaykh, he, has, he is a PhD Shaykh, according to his words, not my words, Muhammad is not a Muslim, he is a criminal, he ha his heart is harder than a stone and you know, uh, you, have be you have to be sane to follow such a, uh, insane to follow such a person. So here we can see that even the Muslims uh, confirm and acknowledge that Muhammad is nothing but a criminal and he does not know his Allah, he is a fake prophet, he is the son of Satan himself. And how, how beautiful is it that we can use the Muslim arguments, the Muslim words against their prophet in the court of law? Yeah, I would say that I guess, um, I know quite a few, a lot actually of Muslims and I, um, just the, like one person, um, I'm, I'm telling fibs, two people have ever said to me, um, oh, you must be Islamophobic. For one, I don't believe that there is such a medical condition, but I, I knew what they were trying to say and I guess I wouldn't spend my, I mean, I for sure would research Christian persecution just um, mm -hmm. in order to be able to help. Um, but I don't, um, I don't, I didn't particularly enjoy reading the Quran or the Hadith. Um, it's very difficult to ask questions. I can actually find them in a second. There are Hadith that tell you not to ask questions. Um, which again is counterintuitive to Christianity, where we are told to work out our salvation with fear and trembling, um, to have a right-minded um, attitude to the scripture, to, uh, you know, line upon line, precept upon precept, here a little, there, like basically build up the case for Christ within your own heart. Um, so I guess just the fact that nowadays we're, you know, so many more people, um, Come to all different religions but lately i've seen people leaving islam and i praise god for that because i don't have anything against muslims i often um like i i, I have respect for a lot of muslims who i debate with and i speak with um i just don't want to be standing on judgment day and trying to explain why i didn't try my very best to fulfill the great commission and for anybody who doesn't know that is to basically go out and make disciples of all nations because
God knows um, before we're even born, he knows who will be saved. And it's not like Allah who destines, you're going to go to hell, you're going to go to heaven, you're going to, you know, it's not in that respect. It's because our God is outside of time. He knows already, I believe, this is my interpretation, he knows the results of our actions, Mm -hmm. even at the end of our life, before we've even began our life. He already knows the outcome of what we will choose. And in that respect, he's able to write our names in this book um, of life. And we are then um, members of the body of Christ. And this is why it really has awfully affected me over the last few days when, and I'm going to continue on because I feel convicted by the Spirit to do so, to try to raise some small awareness of what is going on with our brothers and sisters in Nigeria, in Pakistan, in North Korea, in Sudan. In Somalia, there's literally 50 countries where every month 105 churches are attacked, burned, vandalized, where every day, and this is every day, 11 Christians are killed. Like just for being Christian, not accidentally a drive-by shooting. It's with the express intent of um, reducing the amount of professing Christians on the earth. Um, Mm. And by continent, these are the last steps I'm going to read because... I've had I, not nightmares because I have the Lord, but I've woken up, Rob, with I've made the mistake or potentially of looking at some images. Um, one of them I'm going to describe very briefly. It's a three year old Nigerian girl. She's kneeling on the floor. Her head is also on the floor in front of her. And there is wow. at least, I guess it's a 10 inch knife um, mm. coming out of her skull. And that mm. and an open grave of Nigerian Christians who were slaughtered uh, five days ago, six mm. days ago. It's not the stuff of years ago. It's mm. not like you can say, oh, that was, you know. I don't think, I don't think those were uh, Buddhists or Hindus who did that. I think those were Muslims who did that to that uh, young Christian child, One right? caveat I would say yeah. that yeah. Boko Haram or, <laughs> yeah. or ISWAP, yeah. um, they also do kill Muslims. So mm. they are an equal opportunities uh, terrorist organization. They don't they don't take prisoners. They kill them. That's just a saying. They don't. Yeah, but prisoners. why why are they killing those uh, maybe, maybe small numbers of Muslims? Because uh, they consider them to them to be hip- hypocrites. If you in Islam, if you are a hypocrite, you are a munafiq. Also, a munafiq, a hypocrite, is allowed to be killed according to Sharia law. So if you're a munafiq, you're not a true Muslim. You're not considered to be a true Muslim. You're also allowed to be killed. This is why they are doing that, right? So they go back to the teaching of Muhammad, right? That's the problem. The the, the basic of Islam is Muhammad. Is the, you know, the Quran and, and, and you know, Allah, uh, the Quran and, and Muhammad, the Sunnah, who are teaching that, that. So they always go back to what Muhammad taught them, right? To kill uh, yeah. uh, 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 non-believers, to fight the people of the book, as we mentioned earlier, like, chapter nine, ayah yeah. twenty-nine, and and not only that, we see we see even in the time of Muhammad, Muhammad killed his enemies left and right. He did not uh, have any mercy with them. Like and and as we mentioned, if Muhammad claims to be a true prophet from the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, in the line of the true prophet, you should at least be consistent you should have been in the line of the prophets before you but here we see a totally different guy totally different god the god of abraham isaac and jacob is our heavenly father if we go to chapter 5 i 18 of the quran allah clearly saying he's not father to anyone else why would he punish you if the jews and christians claim uh, that uh, god is their father so muhammad not not only is he showing his ignorance here he's nothing but an ignoramus confusing uh, uh, you know, he's confused about why we are calling God our Heavenly Father. He's immediately starting to, to think with his penis. I'm sorry for using this word, but it's it's the truth because he's thinking that we are the physical children of God. So he yes. had no idea what he was talking about when he fabricated chapter 5, ayah 18, for example. There are other ayahs also that are talking uh, about the fact that Allah is father to no one. But if we, if we continue seeing what Muhammad did to his enemies, what about uh, the killing, the killing of someone like Um Qirfa, who was a really old woman. I mean, you know, we already mentioned the killing of, of women and children. Here we see Muhammad not even having any mercy for a, a very, very old woman. He, he 
the the poor woman, you know, he split her in half by, by tying her uh, hands and feet to two camels from opposite side, and he commanded his uh, sorry to show to show uh, you know I'm 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 looking at a, a comic on the screen, you know it shows how the poor old woman who is tied in the middle and on opposite side you have a camel who will go in in different direction and the poor woman is split in half her whole body ripped in half and as if that's not enough they even took her daughter as a sex slave i mean this is this is this is a prophet or is this a mafia cult leader who, who you I know i don't understand how um the take like you know, you could maybe argue that you've got a really vengeful God who's like maybe like you could just like stretch the truth or whatever. Say this woman definitely she did something wrong. Mm. What the children have got to do with it and for what purposes? Like I don't think I'm sure that God does not ordain like the snatching of babies. The you know. So with that in mind, I've just got a couple of verses. Um, literally, you already spoke of Matthew five. So mm. Micah. Uh, chapter 6 verse 8 says this he has shown you O mortal what is good and what does the Lord require of you so it's very simple he's shown you what is good what does he require of you he requires to act justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with your God I don't hear anything about killing or snatching children 1 John 4:20 says, whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. We also know, I'm going to pause John a minute, we also know that lying lips are an abomination unto the Lord. We know that all liars will have their part in the lake of fire. Coming back to John. So whoever claims to love God yet hates a brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. So that's another one. And I think... Mm, one more Jeremiah 22 so I'm going to end when I do end in like 10 minutes I Jeremiah 29 has one of my all-time favorite verses but for now still Jeremiah 22 it says does it make you a king to have more and more cedar did not your father have food and drink he did what was right and just so all went well with him he defended the cause of the poor and needy and so all went well is that not what it means to know me, declares the Lord. But your eyes and your heart are set only on dishonest gain, on shedding innocent blood and on oppression and extortion. So clearly God is not happy uh, with those things. So Rob, I'm going to give you the last like three, four minutes. Then I'm going to wrap up with the last of Jeremiah that I love. Um, because, yeah, so we've, we've been on for almost an hour. Um, if you... So I'm going to privately, I'll send you, not not the images for sure, but some reports. I would love it if, I know you do very long um, live streams and God bless you for that. And I'm sure that, you know, your audience are all like basically uh, thanking God for you and the way that you're able to explain very easily some of the things that the Muslim apologists have basically lied about for forever. Yeah, that's the one. So, um, yeah, I'm going to send you some of these reports because, as I said, the British government, for sure, the German government, I know Angela Merkel, for all I may disagree with her policies, she also admitted globally that Christianity is the most persecuted religion. And we need to let people know that because, like I said right at the beginning, we are led to believe that um, certain uh, sects of Islam or Islam as a whole is uh, treated very poorly in the West and that we're all all guilty i think I, last time i checked i think that's the, the narrative we're all guilty of islamophobia and that actually the legal definition of islamophobia includes bizarrely disagreement with the ideological position so i for one will never agree that allah is my yahweh your yahweh our god because he clearly isn't and i could find you know i could literally stand up uh, to scrutiny uh, with those verses so I'm going to give you the last few minutes and then I'm going to come back to me as always and uh, yeah please do um, give us your thoughts on what we've discussed and uh, let us know what plans you have maybe like I don't know the, the time is yours 
Yeah, uh, thank you for uh, allowing me to be here again with you. Uh, I really appreciate uh, this opportunity for the second time. Uh, we went through uh, some uh, Muslim sources and you know, it, it strikes me odd. It's so funny and it's so disgusting at the same time that Muslims always forget to go back to the basics. And who is the basic? It's Muhammad, the man behind this cult that we call Islam. You have to go back and study his life. What did Muhammad do? What did Muhammad say? What did uh, Muhammad do later? You know, and we always see Muslims go, uh, going back to the Meccan periods, going back to the Meccan ayahs that they want to show us how peaceful Muhammad was when he was in Mecca. But they forget that chapter 9, chapter 9 on itself, Surah at tawbah the chapter of the sword, right? Yeah. The, the chapter of a safe, right? The safe, the sword, uh, uh, abrogated at least 120 peaceful Meccan ayahs, right? Mm -hmm. Muslims, yes, maybe you can find those ayahs in the Quran, but we have something called abrogation. And we see when Muhammad, he's uh, uh, in full control, he has an army, is basically a king. There is no need for peace anymore. And he's, he's, and he's commanding his Sahaba to go fight and force the jizya on the people of the book. So don't fear book poverty, Muhammad is telling his, uh, his complaining Sahaba who started to complain to him, you know, we're going to go bankrupt. He said, no, no, don't worry, be happy. Uh, we have something called jizya that we are going to force on the Jews and the Christians. So your only job is fighting in fi sabil Allah, right? In, for the sake of Allah. And the only job of the Muslims is to attack the countries all over the world and to take the whole planet, basically, right? This is why you see when Muhammad dies and, and the Muslims grow stronger and stronger, uh, you know, uh, when Abu Bakr is finally the, in command after Muhammad's death, he's the first caliph, he's commanding his generals like uh, Khalid ibn Walid to start to attack the surrounding country. They start to attack Iraq, they conquered Iraq, they conquered uh, Egypt, which was also a Christian country like Iraq. They went to uh, Bilad al-Sham that we call Damascus, uh, you know, uh, Syria nowadays. So they went uh, to, to all the countries in, in the Middle East and North Africa and whatnot. And, and you see later, you see the, uh, uh, the Ottoman Empire trying to conquer uh, also whole Europe. Uh, yeah. Thanks to the Lord, they, they failed. Uh, you know, and they were, yeah, and, and you, and, yeah, maybe you heard of, about the Janaries, you know, the, the Ottomans who used to steal young boys, right? Capture young boys who were Christians and uh, co uh, basically convert them in, uh, in, in, in brain dead zombies to, to fight uh, for the Ottoman Empire. And we call them Janissaries, yes. So, they, you know, in the name of this cult, many horrendous stuff happened. And we have to always go back to the basics. Who is the basic? Who, who is the man behind all of this? It's Muhammad. You know, Muslims should stop. We, we, are, not, we are not living under that stone anymore. We have be, become immune for your taqiyya and deception and lies. Now we can read the sources. They are everywhere because of the internet. We can find them online. We can also find the books. We can buy the books. Everything uh, is slowly getting translated more and more. So stop lying to, to our faces. We know Islam. We now know the true face of Islam. And we know the fruits of Muhammad. You know, and Jesus said, by their fruits, you will know them. This is why we have to reject Muhammad, because he's nothing but a cult leader, you know, who forced the jizya on the Christians and the Jews, especially the Christians. And if you don't pay jizya, we will kick you out of your houses. If you don't want to leave, we will take your women, uh, your daughters, and your wealth. Uh, and we will kill you. And this is why, when Muhammad, remember, Muhammad, when he sent the letter to the Roman Empire, to the, to the emperor of Rome, uh, sorry, of the Roman em em Empire, he said to them, Aslim, Teslim, Aslim, Teslim, that means convert or else. Muhammad didn't say, hey, let us give us each other a hug, and, you know, let us have some peace. No, he said to him, convert or else. And Muhammad even told his Sahaba, you know, let us go and and take the yellow blondies, which he called, uh, you know, uh, uh, the Romans, you know, they were blondes. So let us go capture uh, the women and you can have them as, as bounty, as sex slaves. And even one of the Sahabi, right, he said, you know, you know me, right? If I go with you, I'm going, you know, I'm not going to hold myself back because this guy was clear a rapist. And he said, Muhammad, please allow me to stay back. And Muhammad, 
actually, instead of saying, uh, you know, uh, uh, okay, uh, good for you, you know, uh, stay, or he even called him a hypocrite. Imagine, Muhammad yeah. is telling, you know, if you're going to fight, with, you'll get a lot of bl young, beautiful blondies, the, the blondies, or, or asfar, which, which, you know, basically literally means the yellow ones, the, the blondies. So you see this, this evil man, this cannot be a man of God and claims to be a prophet in the line of the all true prophets. Especially, you know, when you're going to talk about Jesus who said, love your enemies. Here we see a totally different man who started all the killing all over again. While Jesus fulfilled the old laws, he fulfilled the hate. And, 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 and uh, you know, as, as we read earlier, right? You have heard an eye for an eye, a tooth for a tooth. Now, we, uh, I'm commanding you to love your enemies, right? Uh, you will get persecuted, but forgive them. Uh, forgive those who persecute you and pray for the ones who persecute you. But here we see Muhammad, totally different guy. Thank you for allowing me to be here with you, sister. It was a great blessing again for a second time to uh, talk to you and maybe teach our audience who are listening the true face of Islam. God bless everybody. God bless your audience and your full-time ministry, sister. Uh, and uh, Lord willing, we will have another okay. amazing video together. Again. I don't even need to hope for it. I pray for it. Um, I'm just going to, like, I don't know, maybe two minutes. I'm just going to speak what comes into my heart. So I guess I would like everybody to know that in Jeremiah 29, <clears throat> excuse me, 11 to 13, um, it says this. And this, especially I feel... Um, Nigerian Christians probably need to hear this. Um, also those in Pakistan where I just did an interview that's going to go up soon um, with a Pakistani Christian and they also suffer some uh, horrific treatment. So Jeremiah 29, 11 to 13 says, For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. Then you will call on me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me when you seek me with all your heart. So I guess that um, what's, yeah, what's in my mind or my heart is that this world is not our rest. That's what we're told. This is not our place of um, respite. This is the place where God forges us uh, to become uh, who he want, who he always destines us to us to be we we can't really fight against it we will become the person if we choose the blood of christ to um to become a more perfect version of ourselves obviously the perfection won't come until judgment um after that actually but in the meantime to the newly apostatized muslims that i've had the privilege to talk to recently who have accepted christ um i would uh I, it gladdens my heart uh, no end like I get very excited I'm like a kid and I want to tell them the whole bible really quickly and show them uh, you know the truth but the fact is that the truth will not be diluted by um, taking it in uh, bits at a time or you know focusing on one part or the other like uh, similar you know the way the Quran's being scrutinized again uh, without the red line that Yasser Qadi spoke about without the limits as it were um, the truth will not it doesn't matter if the truth is scrutinized it doesn't become false because everybody knows it it just becomes as true and a more strengthened version because it's in the hearts and minds of christians so our god our jesus uh praise his mighty name is the truth there is no uh falsehood in him he doesn't lie ever he tells us plainly and clearly um all aspects that we need to know and it's not like as in islam where you need to put your right foot forward and wash your nose three times no, he tells us, repent in your heart, uh, confess with your mouth, uh, be born again. He says, unless you're born again, basically you're not getting in. Um, we must confess our sins to our, and then mm -hmm. ask forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, pray ceaselessly, we're told, and what we ask for will uh, be given to us. So um, what I ask for, and I know I speak for you as well, Rob, is that, that the Lord would move mightily in the Middle East where Christianity originated, in Africa also, in all of the countries um, that are just too numerous to list, but I will put it in the description if anybody wants it, just comment. Um, mm. We pray that the Lord will move mightily. And even though we know that um, their martyrdom does not deflect from their um, salvation, 
uh, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ because it actually hurts a lot. Like I don't, mm. it's especially, I don't want to get political, but black lives matter in Africa and Nigeria as well. Christian lives matter. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't really matter who's doing the killing, whether it's Hindus, uh, mm-hmm. Buddhists, atheists, just mm-hmm. random paid militia. Doesn't mm-hmm. matter. There are people who are committing no crimes. They're not trying to be arrested and something goes wrong. They're actually innocent people who are being macheted, shot, burned, raped, dismembered, buried alive. Um, the list just goes on and on. So I don't want to end on a not a positive note. I want to end on the fact that the Lord can and will pierce their hearts, take away their fear, remove their pain and bring them to him at the time that he has destined them always to have. And um, if their tragedies can strengthen the body of Christ and for us to come together as we are commanded to, um, I don't care one bit if someone's a Catholic or a Presbyterian, I just don't care enough to even talk about it. What I care for is their love for my God and if they love my God, I can't do anything but love them um, mm-hmm. as I'm commanded to mm-hmm. anyway. But I would even if I was. Mm-hmm. You know, that, and, and, and yeah. yeah if 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 I can add some, uh, on top what you said, sister. You know, uh, here we see Muhammad. You know, the the basic of Islam, the man behind of Islam. He is nothing but a hateful, uh, warmongering uh, uh, person who only seeks uh, seeks. Uh, for uh, sex slaves and women, but on the other hand, we see Christianity and our perfect example, Jesus Christ, Lord Jesus Christ, the name above all names, who taught us to love one another. If you look at a woman, uh, just by looking uh, at her, you already committed, uh, you know, uh, adultery in your heart. So totally different teaching, totally different uh, man, uh, and you know, we have we have Muslims. A lot of Muslims lately are leaving Islam. Uh, I had the honor to pray uh, with a couple of Muslims the last weeks, and we had four Muslims who left Islam and became Christians. So, to the Muslims who are listening, we have hope for everybody, including you. Don't allow your imams, shuyukh, your ustaz, people from Indonesia or Malaysia or wherever you are in, wh- in which country you are. Don't allow these people to deceive you any longer. This is 2020. Use your own healthy set of brains. Don't allow them to deceive you. Don't stay like a zombie in this man-made cult. Islam was not never your religion. It's an Arab cult for the Arabs only. So don't stay say uh, deceived. Don't be duped by your imams and shuyukh. Please leave this man-made cult and come back home to Jesus. Your Lord, our Lord, we need Jesus. We are nothing without Jesus. So Amen. please, it's your salvation. That's it. Nobody can do it for you. Even mm. we, um, as much as we would love to, can't talk you into it. Anybody who's considering, like I'm not interested in, uh, you know, taking atheism. Obviously, I want them to come to Christ yeah. because he is the only way. And um, I'm going to have to wrap it up. Unfortunately, I have talked to you for hours. But you would win because you talk more than me. I don't know how it's possible. But I would love honestly, to stay all night long with you, yeah. sister. You know, it's a it's a blessing to you know to to share the truth. But you know, we don't do this as you said. We don't do this for ourselves. Uh, we only do this for the truth. And we invite those Muslims who are nothing but victims to come back home. Please come back home. Yeah. Well, I would like to end on a positive note. All prayer is positive. <laughs> I would like to sincerely pray for the members of Boko Haram, for the ISWAP, for Daesh, for ISIS, for um, for the militant Hindus, for the North Korean government. I would like to pray for the persecutors of Christianity that they could have a spiritual awakening so powerful as to bring them out of their delusion and bring them, conform them, um, the Holy Spirit can conform them to the image of Christ so that they can be as Paul, um, Saul even, in the Bible who became Paul, they can go from, because he was the greatest persecutor and he became the greatest evangelist and defender of Christ. Um, so the Lord can and will save to the uttermost those who call upon his name and accept the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And I've got to end it there, but what a, um, what a blessing uh, Christ is to all of us and if you don't know how or why you can for sure find me on discord or youtube and uh, and ask me to let you know and also rob is obviously available on his live streams at rob christian 
on YouTube. And as for that, I have to go. And God bless you, Rob. And thank you so much. I know you're very busy. Um, and it's a blessing to call you my brother and my friend. And um, for thank sure, you, soon, sister. hopefully, we'll speak again. Honor is all oh. mine. Thank you. Ble yep. all right. Pleasure God is all mine. You. Thank you for having me. God bless your audience, your viewers. And uh, Lord willing, we can have another show in the future. Thank you. Amen. All right. Amen. Take care, God bless everybody. You. God bless. All God right. Bless. Bye bye. Bye bye.